the biggest challenge right now is that whatever waste is coming out of the industry can it be altered for certain uses. Now when you talk about the applications or industrial uses unless you transform the waste in a activated form it cannot be used. A good example of this is if I want to develop zeolites. Now zeolites are nothing but catalysts. So there is a process by which you can alter the mineralogical form of a material. Please notice when I say material these are nothing but the geomaterials which are essentially soils and rocks in an elevated or altered state of activity which is nothing but a catalyst or a zeolite. So this is what is meant by mineralogical transformation or mineralogical modeling that means just for your information a lot of efforts are being made by people and particularly civil engineers in doing some research related to SRT that is silica reduction technology. Civil engineering has become a very interesting profession these days by the way and my focus of lecturing and discussing with you is to tell you that civil engineering no more deals with what it used to be and that is where you will find that this philosophy which we are going to talk about gives you enormous opportunities and dimensions it adds to your thinking process and so on. Okay. Any other question? Yes, please. Sir, uh, the basic objective of this modeling techniques is to find the contaminant geometrical interaction, is it? But uh, like we have, we have already mentioned that this uh, interaction is very, very slow. And when we need, and it is a very complex process, then how accurate is this modeling technique going to be? Like uh, if, if it is a time bound process, then there will be instances where we need, we need to get the results very soon and so that we can take any alternative measures and all. But since it is a very complex and a slow process like you are mentioning, how accurate are we to the results? You should understand, it is a good question you are asking Sneha I suppose, is it not? Yes. What is the need of modeling first of all? You should understand what is modeling? It is a sort of a prediction, simulation of something which is happening somewhere and you want to speculate when monsoons will come. Yeah. What is going to happen to stock market tomorrow? What is going to happen to the price of the dollar say after 5 days? Why do you speculate all these things? So this is where actually mathematical modeling is involved. There must be some algorithm which projects the data of 25 years for another few months or few days or few years. So coming back to your question, do not you want to leave a good and clean environment and the world for your future generations? Yes. Now this is what is bugging most of the researchers and planners. Whatever activities we are doing today, what is the impact of this activity down the line after 5 years, 10 years, 50 years? A good example of this would be most of the atomic power plants which are being constructed in the country, did you ever wonder that what is the biggest challenge in front of these atomic power plants? Exactly. So when you talk about waste disposal, where you are going to dispose the waste? Now this is where atomic physicist role is over and a geotechnical engineer's role starts, you know, because you are going to handle the waste. Now if you bury in the ground, what is going to happen? Subsurface is not a passive environment, I hope you understand this. So slowly and slowly because of the interaction of the water table or the moving water, what is going to happen to the waste? This waste is going to get carried from one point to another point. Now this is where the role of modeling comes into the picture. What would be the intensity of a contaminant at a certain point of time at a certain place so that I can draw a limit of the zone of influence of an atomic power plant and I can put a warning that nobody should live in this area for another 100 years. This is one of the examples which I have given to you indirectly that why these type of modelings are required even if the process are slow. In fact, it is other way. When the process are going and the mechanisms are going to be so slow, the modeling exercise becomes much more important and useful and this is where actually we take help of accelerated modeling. That means you like to accelerate a phenomena and we will try to see what is the impact of this mechanism on the system. We will talk about these issues slowly and slowly. So it is a sort of acknowledgement which I include in the overview 
that the contents of this course are mainly based on the research findings of the instructor that is myself and my PhD and masters students who have been instrumental in developing a unique laboratory environmental geotechnics laboratory in the department of civil engineering IIT Bombay and you can visit this laboratory by clicking on this website that is www.civil.iitb.ac.in forward slash dns forward slash e n v i g e o t e s dot h t m l this is how the laboratory looks like you will find most of the facilities and the instruments which we are using and the studies which were done by the previous students and the present students their findings are being used for development of this course you will notice that uh, we have good facilities for determination of thermal properties of the geomaterials soils rocks admixtures admixtures are i am sure you must be aware of what are the admixtures these are nothing but pozzolans or the cement silica fume fly ash gypsum powder and so many things we try to characterize these materials for finding out what is the heat of hydration what is the heat how heat migrates in these materials another new concept which we are working on is the determination of electrical properties of the geomaterials and the pore solution pore solution is the chemistry part of the geomaterial that is what type of chemicals which are present in the pores of a geomass or a geomaterial that is soils or rocks we talk about the electrical resistivity dielectric properties and all and based on this we try to characterize the material we deal with fly ash and sonosphere characterization which is a form of a waste which is coming out of the industry another new subject which is being pursued by my research group is characterization of unsaturated soils i'll just give you a bit of idea about the unsaturated soils seema is working in this area your senior so whenever you get time you can talk to her and get a praise well, i'll try to give you bit of information on unsaturated properties of the soils this is what you have been asking sneha detection and migration of contaminants in soils and rocks so this type of modeling we have now i would say mastered where we simulate contaminant transport in porous system though it is very very slow but we can augment it we can accelerate this process and we can study how contaminants are migrating from one point to another point then we study the simulation of environmental influences on soil properties that is you were asking about this question shiv prakash about the humidity and temperature so we can expose the material to certain humidity and temperature and we can see how the properties get altered determination of volumetric moisture content of soil this is a new concept in geomechanics where we do not rely much more on uh, gravimetric moisture a conventional way of finding out the moisture by open drying method rather we try to find out what is the amount of moisture which is present in the pores of the soil that is at the pore volume level without disturbing the matrix of the soil and there is a lot of studies going on the hydraulic conductivity of soils you are most welcome to those of you who are from iit bombay you can visit the website sorry you can come to the laboratory directly and those of you who are from the remote center can visit the website well let's talk a bit about the prerequisite for the course the first prerequisite is sufficient exposure to basic science in fact sciences that is physics chemistry biology materials and dot 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 you can keep on adding civil and environmental engineering anything which comes to your mind after hearing me after 40 minutes what else should be added as a prerequisite for this course this is the requirement of cd that i should include a slide on prerequisites for this course so i could write only this much and i need your ideas to complete the slide bindya geology well that's also a, i am sorry i have i have ignored geology 
it should be included in basic science like physics, chemistry, biology, materials, geology and so on, yes, anything apart from this which you like to get added? Mathematics, okay, yes. So to be more precise, geotechnical engineering itself should be added in this. Okay, good. So I thought of adding this adequate concepts of soil mechanics. So see these are two different words. One is the sufficient exposure and another one is adequate concepts of soil mechanics, rock mechanics and geotechnical engineering. There is still some space is left so can you suggest some more prerequisites here? Seema anything which is left out? You have read my mind. Okay. <laughs> so, an inquisitive and thoughtful mind is the first prerequisite, in fact. What else? Believe me, she has not seen the slides when I was preparing. <laughs> What do you say, Sachin? Unconventional observations of the nature. What do I mean by unconventional is and what I keep on telling to myself and to my research associates is your observation should not be conventional. To a researcher, you know, something should be apparent with others cannot visualize. So that is a must for this type of a course. In fact, I would say again and again this is not a real course, but this is a basically a philosophy which we are trying to give it a form of a course and to share with all of you. Anything apart from this which I have missed out? Sneha? What comes to your mind? Foresight or vision. Okay. Foresight and vision, okay, all right. Anything else? So let me complete the list which, uh, oh sorry, yeah this is what I could think of. So you were talking about foresight and vision, any other input? I think it should cover almost everything. If you have exposure of civil engineering, environmental engineering, basic sciences, adequate concepts of soil mechanics, log mechanics, geotechnical engineering. Inquisitive and thoughtful mind, unconventional observations of the nature, I think it should be good enough to start with. Please complete the list and keep on sending me your feedback. Coming to the references for this course, I hope you will realize that it is mostly like you know sharing the knowledge and experience with you. Sometimes knowledge and experience may be wrong also. So you should not blindly follow what I say in the lecture. So you should have a mechanism by which you can filter out what is correct and what is not correct. But still you can rely on lecture notes and interaction in the class. Interaction is very important not only for geometrical contaminant interaction, but interaction between the, the person who is preaching and the, and the thoughts you know. You will find that information available on the web is most important here. Anything which you come across, newspapers particularly, they are talking a lot about environmental issues these days. Proceedings of the international conferences and symposia, there are specialized conferences which are being conducted these days on environmental geotechnics, geomechanics, these are all mesonomers basically. Environmental geo, environmental geotechnology. I offer this course as the undergraduate course with a bit of change of the contents. This course is basically for mature minds and the minds which are free from all other headaches. Those who are not doing, you know, undergraduate, those who are not going through the trauma of undergraduate teaching over here. 
some of the international journals which are useful for this course would be ASC, Journal of Geoenvironmental Engineering, Soil Science Society of America, ASTM, American Society of Testing Materials, Canadian Geotechnical Journal and so many other journals which have come up in the recent past. Books on environmental engineering and geotechnical engineering may be helpful. To be specific, these are the books which I think are very useful, but you are not really, uh, I would not force you to buy these books or occupy or, or procure a copy of these books, but these are good references. Whenever you get hold of these books or references, please go through or in your career also you may use them later on. Dixon and Weed Mineralogy, Minerals in Soil Environments, this is a specialty volume on Soil Science Society of America 1989. Those of you who are too much interested in the mineralogy or those of you who may work further in mineralogical alteration and mineralogical properties of the soils and geomaterials, it is a bible for them. There is a book by John F. Fries, Contaminated Land Treatment Technologies. Acker and Daniel, Geoenvironmental 2000, it is a conference volume, Containment, Remediation and Performance in Environmental Geotechnics. As I said, people are using these words very loosely geotechnics, geomechanics, geotechnology and so on. The essence is same, the cover is different. Another good book which has come in the market recently is by Hari and Krishna, Geoenvironmental Engineering, Site Remediation, Waste Containment and Emerging Waste Management Technologies. But you will find that these books are mostly you know specific on a certain topic like this book is mostly on geoenvironmental engineering, site remediation, waste containment and whatever management technology should be evolved and so on. There is another book by Ovis and Khera, Geotechnology of Waste Management, second edition. This book normally talks about more into the waste management techniques. What my efforts would be to give you something which is totally different than what is existing here and that is why actually I say that become it is more important if you interact during the class and let me not proceed further okay, rather than uh, sitting silently here. Sometime back one student had asked me a question that why do not you write a book on this. So, my answer was that yes, still I am learning the subject and the day I learn it then I will try to write some book on this, it is not so easy. So, it is really you should appreciate the efforts made by these uh, researchers in coming up with some you know books or a sort of a compiled version of their research it is difficult. The topics and syllabus <coughs> would be something like this, general principles of the subject which takes almost three to four lectures to clear what are the basic principles behind this topic or the subject. Introduction, what we have discussed is half of the introduction covered for the topic. <coughs> Nature of soil and environment, this is something interesting. It gives you a new vision to understand how soils can be treated and they can be given their due weightage particularly when they are taken out of the environment or when they are lying in the environment itself or when they are forced to interact with the environment which happens to be very aggressive. This is another word which we normally we use aggressive environment. So, aggressive environment is nothing but an environment which is having everything of extreme, extreme humidity, extreme temperature, extreme chemical flux, extreme radiological activity and so on, clear. 
So, this is where we say that this environment is very aggressive, not conducive to mankind. It is a topic which I like to discuss about is soil technology. There is no course offered on soil technology itself. Truly speaking, soil technology itself is a big course. You can spend enough time learning what is meant by technology of soil. Any guess? You do a course on soil mechanics, soil engineering. So, what should be the difference between soil engineering and soil technology? What is the difference between two words engineering and technique? I am sure that 4 or 5 years back you must have gone through this trauma of selecting a B or B tech degree from a certain institute. Some institutes offer a course in degree as B E and some institutes offer a course as B tech. Did you wonder about the difference between B E and B tech or everything is same or you never bothered about this? So, anyway, I will not go in the debate of all this, I will simply ask you a question what is the difference between engineering and technology? And then the question is why this topic should be studied? Why you should not be satisfied only with soil engineering? And I think in our department we offer two courses soil engineering 1 and soil engineering 2. Seema, is this correct? 1 and 2. So, 1 you must be doing, I suppose, this semester itself. Second course you will be doing next semester. So, any guess? What is that you do not cover or do you do not study in soil engineering which requires some technology to be developed? In day to day life, how would you classify engineering and technology? So, Chit. Sir, I would like to give an example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, suppose a car is there. So, a car, what are the basic parts of the cars? That is nothing but engineering. But some advances which are there in the car or some advanced cars, so that is nothing but technology. So, we are studying some advanced techniques, not only the basic principles. So, that is technology. Engineering is the learning science and uh, technology is the application science. Like Good, I think both of you have given an interesting session. Yes, please. Sir. Like soil engineering deals with the basic basic principles of the soil, with how soil behaves and all. Uh, in the last so many years, how peop what people have researched. Soil technology is me uh, something which which tells us that how we modify soils to um, so that it can work according what we want from it. Like uh, how what ground improvement techniques should be applied and how we modify soil to, um, to to achieve those desired properties which we want from it. That Good. I think your answer is quite near perfection. That is true. Yes, Sinaya. Try. Say something. Maybe soil engineering means the uh, we only know how the soil uh, behaves to uh, I mean, uh, uh, how does it like we like there's construction activity that is going on? So, what are the requir basic requirements that the soil so, uh, soil uh, soil should satisfy and all? But uh, soil technology is maybe the improvements in soil which we desire, in, so that uh, apart from understanding how the soil behaves, we also need to know that if such a situation doesn't arise that we need in soil, maybe to improve its uh, properties, maybe techniques must be developed. Soil technology. Your name, please. Sorry. Your name, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, please try. You want to say something, yes. Sangeeta? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, yeah. So maybe engineering is the it's a branch already which has been already studied. Already it's there. It's no, uh, it's, it's some difference has made. It's, uh, it's upgradation is not made, made, but technology is a science where its upgradation is required in further future references. I think maybe it's good. So that means you are saying that more work for the researchers <laughs> that will come. That's correct. 
So, soil technology is as I perceive is a big question mark. Yes, I think I liked your answer to this soil technology. Yes, please. Agree with their views, sir. Like, it's right. Like, technology is something like which we need to develop further. Uh, with, um, with requires a further enhancement to what like we already have. What is the difference between Intel and something else? You always use the word Intel technology. Yeah, am I right? Why so? Why others could not use the word dot dot technology? Yeah, Ravi, coming back to you. Yes, please. So, what I personally believe is like soil technology is like something improvement, like uh, so that it will be useful for the future generations. Something which which will be helpful for them, like uh, an extension to the engineering soil engineering. Uh, Building a bridge is an engineering or is a technology? Yeah. Why? The moment you ask a question why, that means most of the ingredients are not there and you are looking for something which is missing. So, your soil engineering one, soil mechanics one, soil mechanics two, whatever courses you have done in your undergraduate or what you are going to do here, they are incomplete in my opinion. Do you agree with this? What is your name? Sorry? Binil. Yeah. So, what is incomplete? Uh, already the idea is there, you have to face the upcoming problems also. Like? like in this subject, as in this subject, the what are the problems, uh, if the new contaminant is came in Like you deal with 5 contaminants 10 times, it becomes a known thing, there is nothing new. So, why should we study? Yeah. Like suppose take for like we are having problems like uh, ground improvement techniques for suppose like initially uh, uh, draining of the water if it, if, if it was a soft clay like what I feel is like these sand drains and all for consolidation technique they will be taking a la more time to make that consolidate that clay consolidated. So, like we need to find these techniques like to make them more faster and all. Like if it is taking like some two years or three years to consolidate, like we should be developing a technique so that it, it should be uh, that uh, like the consolidation should be achieved in two to three months. First. So, basically augmentation of engineering is technology, that is what you are saying yes. or augmentation of the experiences which you have in the past would be technology. Yes. Uh, like while constructing a stru any structure. Uh, we will not only uh, design for loads, we will also check into the serviceability condition. So, while soil, we know uh, what is the condition of the soil, what are we going to construct on it, how are we going to construct on it. But with the time, we, are, uh, we also have to check with the serviceability like a foundation, uh, like over a period of time, how does the soil is going to behave. We have to check whether the serviceability of soil is also needed or not. For that, soil technology may be… So, need based. Serviceability. That is a very important word, need based. Yes, need based work or thoughts would lead to some technology, that is correct. Yes, Jain, Jain, Anirudh Jain, yes please. Sir, actually engineering is like whatever uh, the things we made earlier, uh, the things uh, the people studied earlier, we are applying the same thing. Like uh, if we encounter something new and we work upon it and we develop something that is technology. Okay. Shri Prakash. Sir, I would like to talk about uh, soil engineering and technology. Uh, in soil engineering, as per my uh, I mean, uh, knowledge, we study the dynamic properties of soil, how it behaves for, a, uh, for building load or a uh, load of a structure, how it behaves. But in soil technology, uh, we, we will be studying the technical aspects, not only for engineering purpose, 
also for uh, you know, like uh, environmental contamination soil contamination and uh, interaction of uh, water and soil and uh, uh, geo micro by microorganisms in the soil how they accelerate the in interaction and such kind of aspects we will study in okay. soil technology All right. thank you let's see over the few days that how definition of soil technology can be put in a better way one of the answers of what soil technology should be most of the engineering works on convenience human mind basically works on convenience whatever i know i'll prefer teaching whatever i do not know i will never teach you agree yeah you don't agree no you agree correct 